Welcome to Three on the Ones and Twos with your hosts, Tom, Cassie, and James. Just three old friends talking about their favorite records. Think of it as the coolest book club for music nerds. Hey everybody, welcome to Three on the Ones and Twos. Uh, my name is James Joyce. This is Cassie. We have two guests today. As you notice, Tom is on assignment. He is unfortunately not able to join. He went through 50... Seven episodes, never missing a single episode. This is true. That's which impressive. is better than me. And so, me. I appreciate it. And me. <laughs> <laughs> and right. So our, our, our special guests today, we have uh, two episodes of each being each other's guest. We have Rick Moore, Chad LeBanc. Thank you. From Skin huh? Jobs. Skin Jobs. Skin Jobs. From Skin Jobs. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the... the, the Wonderful and amazing skin jobs. And uh, yeah, and, and, and Rick, we're going to start with you. I uh, have known you for 30 years. I, I think 30 now. Yeah, was it, um, was it Crystal's, Crystal's room or, or uh, it was through Eric Rivers? And it that was, was it, your it was room, Roswell. right? Yeah, yeah and it was, um, it was yeah, somewhere in Roswell. I don't know if it was at Eric's house or Crystal's house or your house or something. I don't remember, but. Yep. It you was were a long, yeah. long, long time ago. It was a long time ago. I was in high school. You were in college by, back then. And I actually, I vividly remember your house on Hemp Hill. Right? Yeah, Hemp Hill, 1063. And, uh, and yeah, you were the cool college kid. And we were in high school coming to, to visit or whatever. You took me to Tortillas for the first time. Really? Uh, you, what else? You were in a band called Barrel. Barrel and Carver was a driver of contemporaries. And, and you were in a band called Rebar. Rebar was actually before Barrel and Gary Flom. Frickin' Which, shift, Gary Flom. Yes. But I always thought it was like the same band. They were mostly the same band, kind except of for Gary. spelled differently. Yeah, yeah. With different actually, songs. Oh, that's good, yeah. Different songs. Barrel was, um, what Barrel out of being was uh, the same band, except for Gary. It was uh, a fellow named David Daniel. Yes. Who is uh, a mighty talented guitar player. And... Uh, you play with some some legendary musicians. Yeah, Scott Robbins and Andrew Burns were were really good players. They uh, eventually left to do other stuff, but you know. Yep. Some, somehow it, I wound up with three Car vs. Driver uh, records. The, the second record, they they keep multiplying. Oh, I still have a I still have a box of them myself. Yeah, maybe I don't know how they. they just... Well, when you release a, an album after your band breaks up, and you yes. release two thousand of them. Two thousand. Thirty lot. year thirty years later, you're still gonna have a box. So. He, what he's saying is, if you want more, you've got <laughs> if more. You need, I was using them as I'll packing. I'll start my own I'll get, I'll get Chad okay, I'll, no, I'll give me one. Two. <laughs> but yet the first one has been, you know, out of print since we were even a band actively. Yeah, I know I have that one too. But that's not what we're talking nope. about today. We're but you've been in about... a million bands, and, and as yeah. most recently, it's Skin Jobs. Skin Jobs is the recent one. Yes. Um, there's another fellow that's been in a million bands, and his name is John Reese. Mm -hmm. And John Reese just released, uh, well, it's not just released, I guess it's uh, about a year old or a little, a little more. It's, yeah, 2022. Um, and he's commanded many, many bands, including Drive Like Jehu and Hot Snakes. Um, with We're going to play a game in a minute. Many different partners. Okay. Um, but I've never seen him release uh, anything with it just uh, as a solo record, but he's done that now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's his most mellow record, I think, out of everything. Um, but it's still rocking. It still has his signature um it's still John Reese. Cutbacks, etc. It's called Ride the Wild Night. Wild Night. And uh, it's very adult. I think it's a very adult album because his, his, uh, his lyrics are uh, always, always vaguely personal. Um, but um, He did say this is the most autobiographical he's got. Okay, tell me what you know and, about it because I haven't done any research well, other than well, just he, listen to it a thousand times. He said it's times. the most autobiographical. Now, he, um, he did something that he considered that was essentially a solo album um, under the name Back Off Cupid. Back Off Cupid. Yep. That's and one I haven't really invested any time. That yeah. was, I have the CD of that. That was do, like a 94 or so. I mean, he said, and, and what he'll say about it, that is kind of that he, he, you know, he had some time and, and he was, he, they were coming off tour and he wrote some songs, not necessarily for Drive Like Jehu, but, you know, just was writing some songs. And then that's what eventually became the um, Back Off Cupid's. And then on, on this one, he said that it's it's weird kind of calling it, you know, a, a solo record. Because this is kind of his, his first 
official, you know, it's under his name and Title whatever, does, yeah. like solo record. But he, you know, a lot of the same players that have been in other bands of his are still are, are on this, and he's like, yeah, you know, I still, I still call on like the same people, right. so it's yeah. I can't, I don't feel like I can really call it a solo record because. I'm still got the same people like that I usually work I'm with. I'm sure it's more his direction and just yeah. like this is it. He's probably I mean, tired yeah, of making up, song, probably tired like, of making up band names. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what he said about um, why why this is his first solo record was because um, right now you know people are getting older and it's harder to get everybody together and so by having oh, it where you just kind of have guest musicians mm -hmm. and you and you can really. You can do a lot more, and yeah. you can fit a lot more in. You can actually, like, you know what I'm saying? Rather You're not than tied saying, like, to a certain band. Set, and a set certain, of people that you have to be. Four guys style. have to be here yeah. for, for us to practice. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, it's a collective. So he doesn't play all of the instruments on this album. He um, has his... He plays a lot of it. He, he plays a lot of them, and really it was... Um, not a, drums, I see. Yeah, well, not drums, um, and... And then there's also piano. There's harp. <coughs> there's harpsichord on here. I don't know if it's real harpsichord, but it's. Uh, there's. It's I don't harps, know. I know that. Stuff. Yeah. It's very um, psychedelic. Like well, definitely elements. I, I some Beatles up and on. Beach Boys and, yeah. and all that. See, the the way this kind of came about for him started back when he got um, an acoustic Martin Open. guitar. And he said that he had had other acoustic guitars, but they like tore his fingers up. So he really didn't like playing the acoustic guitar. But this one was really easy to play and sounded good. And so he start, he started like playing around, and the songs kind of came, and and they like things sounded differently once he was playing them on that. So then he got the idea of having having the the piano and having um. Ha you know, having a piano and a harpsichord, and I'm sure he pr I'm sure he has a harpsichord. I mean, yeah. yeah, he does all kinds. Like he has some electronic stuff going on, like you know, oh, yeah, like totally. keyboard and stuff. It's very, it's interesting. Yeah, I hate my neighbors in the yellow house. That's a, right, it's a, it's right. a great, it's a great song, side two opener. You know, like. It, it is a great, it is a great, and it, it, it just, you know, the funny thing is I'm having an issue with my next door neighbor, and they have, like, a gray house, but, uh, like, I, every time I was listening to this, I, I was just like, the gray house. they gotta move. I'm like, yes, yeah. yes, they do. <laughs> so, uh. It reminds me of, um, of Freedom of Choice. At least the intro is yeah. very, yeah. very, yeah. very like, here, here. Devo here. Feeder, yeah. Freedom of Choice, like, and with the synth going. Mm. Yeah, the synth is cool. It, or maybe Gates of Steel. It it's really a, could be. A, it threw either. me off because I, I really, um, w which I liked, which I liked because I, and I know we'll get into this uh, like a bit more because um, you were saying that you know, you and p probably also Chad, right, know a lot more and and James about. I don't know so much about like Drive Like Jehu. I I don't know so much about Hot Snakes. Um, and I I really only know, um, uh. RFTC. The big one, Rocket from the Crypt. Rocket from the Crypt. Mm -hmm. So that's like the only album that I know from Rocket from the Crypt, though. But I, know, I mean, I know RFTC pretty well. One. And yeah, I love RFTC his voice. So, but, but it was interesting when I first played this. It was like, it didn't sound like Rock from the Crypt, but it, but it was definitely very familiar because it had his voice and it has the same guitar. But then you go into that second side and then it's like, it starts out with that, that you know, the, the kind of, and, and it, it kind of just throws you because it's not what you expect to hear from... Yeah, it's like very eclectic. Work. The whole thing is kind of eclectic. Sure. There, there's like honky tonk songs, and uh, there's a doo-wop song. The third song is kind of a doo-wop song. Do you still want to make out? Um, and then it, it still has this weird little electronic, like the the electronic voice, the, uh, or, or let's make yeah, out, out like yeah. with the electronic voice, mm -hmm. which is actually I'm, I'm not sure that that's my that might be one of my that's one of my favorite songs on here, but that electronic voice isn't necessarily my favorite. Yeah. I think that's probably my favorite song on here, just because it's got a, a nice clip to it. I like them fast, yeah. uh, and they're all pretty fast. But um, uh, it's really catchy. It's, it's got some some excellent pick slides in it too. You know, it's yeah. hard to pick slides are you, good with so many opportunities to pick slide. You, you have to be very judicious with your placement. Does he pick slide on acoustic? Is the question. I don't know. I do appreciate, and I think about John Reese. This is the first album I can remember of him playing really acoustic guitar, and it being. Sort of the focal it, point. It starts of out with the, that. Of the, yeah, song. the first yeah. song, Ride the Wild it's Night, like, the title track. It, it, it starts out with a, an acoustic. It's kind of his adult contemporary album. Like, I do. I feel like this it's is very when adult you can, album. Because Rock from the Crypt, you, you love them. Drive Like Jehu, you love them. But, like, if you're going to like if you're gonna put it on, like, you have to be, like, Red ready Dead. for it. Yeah. It's not, like, a casual. Like, it's, it's going to. You if know, you're not revved up, you're going to be revved up. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this, you can listen to musically and enjoy it. And not be 
I mean, even like it's chock full of know, texture. It's got DJ a lot of different stuff. texture on here yeah. that, that is fun to play with in the studio. I've definitely had Jim like yell at me, not yell at me, but like at 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 Elmira be like, Dude, "Oh, Jim, you gotta you gotta cool it on the rocket from the crypt. It's so oh, aggro." Oh, really? <laughs> like, Interesting. I mean, it was it was fine, but it was just I think about it, I was like, you know, rocket from the crypt is like. It's always at like 11, 150, 1,000, mm. whereas this I like is more, he's... he's. So I have a question about that then, if out. you're talking about um, Rocket from the Crypt in general. Like, mm. I, I don't, I, I don't, I only know, like I said, the, the RFTC record. Like, is that, how does that compare to other Rocket from the Crypt? Because I don't know that I would consider that... I don't know that I would consider that super aggro. I mean, it's definitely more. Compl- it's like, their least it aggro, I would okay. say, okay. of, yeah. their, of their records. It's like the one where they're trying the to. The most polished. The, the Holly Go Lightly backups. Yeah. They're, okay. they're kind of trying they're, to make something. They're already on a, a major. Yeah. Um, at that point, I think that was kind of the. They, apparently, there was a deal. I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently, um, well, Interscope wanted to sign. Rocket from the Crypt, and Reese said, well, that's fine, but you got to sign Jehu as well. Mm hmm. I heard that story, yeah. Um, however, uh, so everything up until then, and, and including the first record, I think, on, on Interscope, which is Scream, Dracula, the Scream, those are all pretty, not raw sounding, they sound great. That's why a lot of, I love them, you know, the, the tones are great. Um, and the aggression is great. Um, it, it just gets more popular. RFTC, RFTC seems to have some fluff. You They're know, trying to do it's, something. It's, a it's got some filler. There's some really great songs on there, um, but there are some, there are some boners on there, too, I think. Uh, I don't. That's. I think that's the one J or one Rocket record I don't have on vinyl, and uh, it's not the easiest to find on vinyl. I think that there aren't too many of them, but uh, it, it's just it's all those not, It's not the records, one I go to. Yeah. It's not the one I go to. I like. I like Circa Now. That was the. You know. I, I that's, saw them play. That's my favorite. I saw yes, them play. Circa it's the Now first one I heard one. from them, and it, yeah. it's um, it, it has maybe a little bit of trumpet on it. They the trumpet joined in. I think around that time, but it was a, a saxophone. Uh, on the horns, originally just a saxophone, mm-hmm. um, but um, I didn't know. I was I was fr- like to me that's always been, and I don't know if, if their sound is generally like rockabilly, but I've always associated like that album with like of Pompadours. rockabilly. Yeah. Was yeah, it? Yeah, well, it's well, more their visual. My thing was the only the way I was introduced to them, and it's really the <laughs> only band that I would say, or the only album that I would say that I have and that I have memories with, and that I like, you know, reminds me of anything that I would say is that I consider to be rockabilly, but that's because I was really good friends with Phil Stair when I went to UGA, oh, and Phil Stair introduced me <laughs> to that that um, that record. So that's how, that's, but, I, so I just, just because you guys are talking about things that I'm not super familiar with, yeah. I wanted to make sure that my yeah. references were. Yeah. Shout out to Phil Stair, uh, Rocket 350, if you remember that I don't. band. I don't know this person. This is Star Bar, this is like uh, okay. 90 Star Early Bar. Star Bar, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but anyway. Cigar we're Star not, Indians here. I want to I wanna hear about the reason, because you know John Reese inside and out, and you, you chose this album mm-hmm. specifically out of all the other bands, and like I said, we're going to play a game in a minute, okay. but, but t- tell me about like just your, why it is you've picked, and is John Reese, like what what is... From an inspirational perspective, like, well, what John, does he mean to you? John Reese is my hero. Uh, I don't necessarily, I say that kind of in, in jest, but uh, I don't hear a lot of contemporary music at all. I, I, I've insulated myself really well. And it's rare that something comes along that I get into. And But if it's something that he's involved with, I'll probably give it a fair listen. Otherwise, I'm probably listening to some symphonic stuff. Um, but movie scores, Blade movie, Runner movie soundtrack, movie scores, Blade Runner soundtrack. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Interstellar, but um, mostly Ray Fawn Williams. But uh, this one, it it just seemed like a good reason to talk about him comprehensively a little bit. Oh, for sure. Um, and also, like it, it, I I heard this in a, a sort of a tough time, you know, and it, it stuck with me. And it, um, I don't know if anyone else really w- uh, was digging it, but um, it uh, it. It 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 was my companion through a, a rough spot for sure, and uh, so it's near and dear, even though it's not that old, you know. Um, but well, I like that it's, that you pick something that's not old. I like to also picking something that it's not um, that familiar with everyone in the room, you know. Like, yeah. Uh, it, I didn't listen to it until you picked it, and uh, because there's so much volume, John Reese puts out so much stuff. He has yeah. a real like problem. 
I think, with he, his compulsion. He, he talked of about this. He talked about music. this. He can't. He said stop. that he gets cranky if he doesn't like that. Yeah. He, he he like to him that's how he gets things out, and he has to. And because yeah, because yeah, it's, it's a, like you. It's a, you it's a pretty the pretty. List. It's a pretty good problem to have. Yeah, I mean, you he, know, he also put out the other record recently too. The At the Plosos. same time, this the, this Plosis yeah. came out around the same yeah. time, and I think they're both on Swami. Like, Swami is his label. Rob Crow from Pinbag Nations. Really good too. Really, I haven't heard. I haven't heard the closest. I, and I think one of the one of the I do. I mean, it's on my list. It's, it's, a fun one. it's just a fun like one. there's so many. So listen, Rob Crow is Rob Crow is uh, the other other major in the plosives. Rob Crow is heavy vegetable and pinback guy. Okay. He's the guy you would know from pinback. He's also. The guy. I wouldn't know anybody not, from not pinback because pilot. I don't know. He's also well, in the drive like Jay Hughes song Luau. Okay. He's in the back, you know. Yeah. Uh, he's a, he, does, uh, he says suit up. Yeah, in, he says suit suit up. Yep. Yeah. Implosives does Aloha. John Reese do the singing um, and yeah. play? Does I, he do? It's uh, I think it's both both doing the, the singing. I think the writing was probably probably the bringer of wrist was was Rob Crow. I'm thinking. Because I think what what what. It's I a be, great combination though, because I love Rob Crow. As a San Diego, we we're San talking Diego about two heavies, yeah. San Diego San legends yeah. of John Reese and Rob Crow. San Diego has, has so much amazing bands and music. I, I almost moved there in uh, sort of around the time I was around graduating college, and I just stuck it out and I yeah. met my wife Sue. Or, or we actually knew each other in high right. school, but like we started dating, and that's almost what kept me in Atlanta. Like nice. otherwise, I almost. Because uh, I have some really good friends out in San Diego, and uh, is Bob out there? Bob Medina. He he moved back. He was in Egypt and Ethiopia, oh, wow. and uh, and oh god, I forgot the Middle Eastern country, another country, and mm. then he's back in in San Diego. Anyway, um, but I, I love the San Diego scene and and all the bands that came from San Diego. Um, what's your Chad? Your like John Reese? What's your favorite? What's your go-to of of John Reese's bands? Mm-hmm. Uh, for a long time, it was Jehu, but Hot Snakes was taking over mm-hmm. that that round for me, for sure. Especially I, getting to see them play live, yeah, yeah. Hot Snakes and and I really like Night Markers. This is this is the most similar to Night Markers to me. Um, it's got it, it does have um, Garwood on it, who's yeah. also in, in Hot Snakes. But uh, Garwood or Hot Snakes and Night Markers are different only by one member, um, and that's they have a, a different bass player. And Gar is on guitar, so it's 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 almost the same oh. band with Jason Corcona's on drums. Um, Froberg is in. Froberg is not. Okay. And instead of Froberg, like so, move oh, move see. Gar on the guitar, and replace him with a bass player. If you don't have Froberg, it's not Hot Snakes. So it's you, not. You've got a point there. Uh, um, Froberg right. being the main singer. Like, why isn't it just called? The vocals Hot are so different. Right. The vocals are so different, yeah. and the songs are different are vibe. the songs are different too. And I imagine that that might be. Um, I would think maybe Gar being a, a substantial bringer of riffs to that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're going to play I'm, a game. Are you ready? Wait, wait, no, no, don't play the game yet. Because I want to know, so Hot Snakes, but on Hot Snakes, John Ray sings, right? He, he does the vocals. Very rarely, no. no. Really? Okay. Because no. I think that that's the thing, is he has such a distinctive voice mm-hmm. that what really, um, what, what really felt comfortable for me was that I love his voice, and it, and it was, it was so, like, his voice makes, you know, like, because I know the rocket from the crypt, the mm-hmm. RSTC, and it just, it made this feel, like, familiar, kind of like, you know, a little happy place. Oh, buddy. And plus, you know, but it's so different, and, like, all these songs are so, they're so varied, but they all, yeah, yeah. they Rolling all Stones on here. I think he, like, he stretches out. Yeah. I, I appreciate that, because He's I a master of the studio, too. He, he's recorded all those bands, so he's got to, like, just, mm-hmm. you know, this is, like, playtime, I think, you know, to a certain extent. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what else is he going to do with his time, right. you know? What, is he going to go fishing, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's an angler. I wonder about that, though. Uh-huh. I mean, he lives in San Diego. You think he would surf? No. I don't, I mean, maybe he does. I wonder. I guess owning a bar, he's part owner. He owns a bar. He owns a bar, too? Because he also, he has yeah, a radio he's in like, show, yeah, he's a DJ, right? he's a radio he DJ. A, yeah. But his bar is in, like, the, like, what would be considered the buckhead mm. of oh, yeah. San Diego. It's... Like the and, downtown, and, the Disney World. It's like the Disney Martin. World like yeah. part. Like I, I was signage. like, oh, we should go to John Reese's bar. He's like, oh, it's it's kind of in this lame part of town and blah blah blah. But but I guess you know if it's busy and he, he's um, making money. Hey, okay. Okay. Let's play a game. So the game is is that we're gonna we're gonna go around, <clears throat> and each of us is going to name a John Reese band until 
and when until you we run out, until we run out, or you get eliminated. Oh, I'm gonna totally. Well, oh, yeah, no. we have to redo it. Oh, but but you can start because you 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 know at least one amazing. or two. Well, I know, but that's why I, I, I so, think it's so better we, for we'll me go. not to. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's better for me to start. So I'm so, definitely going to So you're not eliminated say, a minute, yeah. immediately. I'm definitely going to say, wait, no, maybe I'm better to say uh, plosives. Plosives. Uh -huh. Well done. How yeah, are we going clockwise? Sure. Um, I don't know. Uh, strategically, I have to say rocket from the crypt. All right. Drive like Jehu. No. Snakes. Um, now you're fucked. Night marchers. Oh, you got it. Back off Cupid's. Pitchfork. Oh. Uh, this one. Swami John Reese. <laughs> Swami John Reese. And Wait, I didn't do said, research. Wait, nobody said, did, did anybody, did anybody say hot snakes? Did I don't we think say so. hot snakes? yet. Okay. You said, oh. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. Uh, did we here. say rock from the crypt yet? He did. I did. Oh, he. Sorry, that was know. low hanging fruit. And you said. Yeah. Sorry, I'm. Drive like Dave. Mike. Sure. Yeah. That's what you said. Drive like Dave, who's been covered. No, I said port, pitchfork. Too. Okay, but I can say oh, drive yeah. like Jehu. Oh, okay. You take drive like Jehu. All right. Sultans. You're, you're still in. Sultans. Damn it, Sultans was all I was gonna do. Uh, advantage. <laughs> oh, am I gonna get eliminated? Oh, no. I don't know. I, I might be eliminated. That might be. Okay. That might be all of them that I'm aware of. No, there's got to be mm. more. Mm -hmm. We already said plosives. Uh, isn't there like a surf Wasn't band there, that he yeah. did or did something? Did somebody say the Saints? Isn't there a Saints? Isn't there, did he do like the he Saints? He wasn't in the Saints. He wasn't. Oh, that, he wasn't. No, no, no. That wasn't inspiration. Some of the stuff sound, kind of sounds like the Saints. No, because, yeah. because it wasn't inspiration. And so it's like I'm just like naming off things that I remember from reading at this point because I don't want to lose. Yeah, no, I think I'm going to lose. Oh, man. Well, it's I mean, not, we all knew I was going to win, but... Uh, Yes. The only one I have left is, is and you're right, there's a Swami John Reese and the Blind Shake. I don't, it, I have surf, that the surf, surf band? Record. See, yeah, I, which is I, really, I really heard good about record. that and I was like, I want to hear him play surf. It's really, really good. And I, I think he uses, like, different vintage gear, different, like, rig for each band, pretty much. Uh -huh. uh, although I, I know it's in flux a bit, but... Um, which is one of the reasons why you have multiple bands, is you play different rigs. Uh, uh, to me, that's... Fundamental, but uh, it's part of the fun. I'm sure there also, are like, more. I was like, he's not even in two. He's not even in two bands. Like, I, I think it's funny, like, because you, you know, you, right? If you're in a band, you're in two at least. You know, yeah. I mean? yeah. <laughs> if you're a drummer, you're in. I, you, I guarantee you, you, though, like, we're gonna like once this is all over, we're gonna be like, because we're gonna think of, because because he's in like reading the list, it's insane. Like, I know that we didn't just cover all of them. I'm There's okay no with way. That, hmm? I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, I think, I think we did pretty well too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't get eliminated. Yeah, I can't believe I was the one who who left. But I said I, I intentionally said I'm gonna I'm gonna do well, this. But I mean, I'm not gonna look it up. I'm not gonna like, not gonna, like cheat. If I got uh, the last one, then I got, everyone else I got would be eliminated. Fork and, yeah, that's true. and pitchfork was a good. Pitchfork one. was an ace in the hole. I was holding that one yeah. back. And Sultans too. I, I realized it was. Sultans. Bad. I had. I was gonna. That was my other backup. Sultans is great. The second Sultans mm -hmm. album is not on vinyl, unfortunately. I think it's um, only CD. It's really, really good. I think O was in, on the first Sultan's record. He might be on the second one, too. Uh, I know Chad's a big fan That's of O. I think so. And, uh, mm. yeah, I don't know. I would like to know, I would like to know the uh, complete list of amplifiers used on this, uh, if uh, anyone out there has that list. Did you, did you show that? It's, it's on always like JCM 800s, but he, I guess he plays other stuff. JCM 800s are for Jehu and Rocket. Yeah. 2203. Um, but uh, I think on the Blind Shake stuff, maybe a Dual Showman, a Black Dual okay. Showman amp. all right, all right. Uh, I know there's a, a, Chad sent me a picture that O posted about uh, John playing a Black Pro Reverb on something, which I think might have been the, uh... he's got a Vox too, he uses a Vox from time to time, mm. but yeah, I don't know the specs for sure, but yeah, cool, vinyl. Super cool. Um, not so cool if you're in a dark bar and you're trying to pick a song. I know. Like you're trying to, like, you can see all the starts. James, James has already like talked about like Through the, the back. Clear, like the clear vinyl. Yeah, I'm how always hard like, it is yeah. can, can, if, if you have the pre-order one yeah, and they're like, oh, here's all the variants. Tell. It's like, you oh no, I want black. It's so many concentric circles, I yeah, can't I see. Home. And yeah. I don't have my glasses. It's really like, pretty though. Uh, it is pretty. It's swampy, but it just says swamp to me when I look at it because it's swampy. It's swampy lettering, and it's. What I really, really like is that it's like, like it's it's. 
it's it's thirty three and a third RPM, but it's like so big. It's written so big as if like you need to like sure. You're like, as if you're old enough to need glasses. I would not need my glasses if I was playing this at El Mir. Side A. I would need my glasses. Side B. But you would because you wouldn't be able to pick the songs because you I couldn't can, see them. The on songs the... are pretty big too. I mean, no, you I mean you wouldn't be things. able to find oh, them. Oh on right, the... right, yeah. You're well, looking at the, the needle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking at the spot in the middle behind. Right. But it's I like that it's concise. I I I. If I'm driving around with it and digitally, and it, 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 if I'm getting on like the third listening through, then I'm like, okay, you know, it, it's too short. But, uh, but I like that it's about 25 minutes. It, it, That's it great. Comes right through, like it, yeah. you know. And, and like I said, I think this I think has it's like 33, high actually. rider skin jobs, like both of them. Yeah. 20, 30 don't, minutes aside at most. Don't or, overstate I mean, uh, 12, it. 12. Yeah. 15 minutes aside at most. You what? Know? Um. So I, I know, and you. Pr I, this is probably self-explanatory, but um. So you heard this because you follow, because you just follow him, because you're a big fan. So, yeah. Because it just, so you kind of knew it was coming out when I it came out. I didn't know it was coming out. I don't know how I came across it. I think I was. Okay, because that was going to be my question. How you came across it to. I like, had the, um, I have the, uh, the Swami John Reese and the Blind Shake album. And I think I was probably trying to pull that up on, so on some platform. So is that a different, is that a different band from this? It's a different band. It's, so it's you've the Blind got Shake, which one. is, it, yeah. the Blind Shake is, is, I think, an extant uh, surf band already. Um, and right. so it's him. Joining up with them, he probably was oh, the bringer, okay. the bringer of risk to that band, and yep. they probably worked around that. Uh, but it's a that's an excellent record too. It's some of the best surf I've heard, um, and uh, it's it has a the, the, it's very cheeky. The the jacket has a lyric list on the you know one side of it, and it's maybe like you know ten words total. It's you know just th <laughs> things like you know freak out or yeah. bath or whatever you know, <laughs> shit like that. You know. What? What are um, that comes up to you when you search for it's you it know it's not in. it's not you know a solo record per se. Have you ever had a conversation with John Reese? I have not met John Reese. I've had many opportunities. Well, I've had several good opportunities in in low populated environments, but I just I don't want to. I shook his hand in Nashville. He was smoking a cigar mm -hmm. outside, yeah, outside the venue. I was like, "What's up, dude?" No, like, What's up, man? I just don't like, want cool. that. That's it. That's it. He's he's got to come off of that. He it, seems nice and he yeah. seems fun. Like he, he, he does. Yeah. If I if I lived in the same town, a long way. Yeah. Hung out. Like if I lived in the same town, I saw him around. It'd be one thing, but like I'm not gonna walk up to somebody after a show and be like, "Hey, man, like I'm just like I've been listening to your records for so long, dude." And like I just think you're rad, you know. Meanwhile, there's like some hot chick that he's trying to talk to. That's not me. I wouldn't do that. But, oh yeah. You know. I just. I don't know, and also I don't want to be. You're thinking about I don't have any preconceptions, members. but yes. I also I don't want to be disappointed. <laughs> but you know, I, like what are you gonna say? It's like you know, it doesn't. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. The music you know? speaks for itself, and yeah. he's an inspiration. He's totally an, inspiration. an amazing what? musician and 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 a, a creative guy. Like to me, I think he's an incredibly inspiring as a dude who's older than us, who is just keeps plays in bands, puts out records makes amazing music like as is not like sort of put out stud or retired or anything he's still like kind of going for yeah. it yeah i mean yeah, he's like, still he's that. still as relevant as ever solo album yeah. i mean like first official like solo album with his name on it at, at after doing this for so yeah. long like, he shows that decades. you can you don't have to like you know, all of a sudden, start playing rockabilly or right. something. Because he's, he's, he's at his best. He's at his best when he's rocking fucking nuts. I yeah. do want to talk about like the individual songs on here. Okay, like just some I like what, this. Um, like, like I want to know what some of the high points are for you, and if there are any any weaker points for you. Um, I don't know if I'd call them weaker. Um, well, weaker just because they're not strong. The ones I'm drawn to uh, are, of course, the, the lead track, Wild, "Ride the Wild Night." Mm -hmm. You know, like. That's kind of what I was doing when I first heard it. I was I was riding the wild a couple of months, and uh, on a you know on a couch, but uh, and it was hot. Uh, but uh, I eat your pawn. You know that that's always a, a you know that whole theme is great. Uh, I think he says something that, yeah, a great line in that one. Uh, uh, Trust it until you bust it. Yes. And then hump it until you dump it. Yeah. Which uh, you know that's that's a, that's wisdom there. That's adult. You know. <laughs> That's some shit. And I, I think that for me that, um, cause then you were gonna say I know because I said that like that song three, you know, do, do you still want to make out? Mm -hmm. it, the um, was song. one of my favorites. Yeah. The, I didn't think I didn't hear the doo wopness, but I will listen back. Well, no, it, it starts out like it starts yeah. out. Yeah. Doo wop, doo wop, doo wop, doo wop. Um, but it's it's like, uh, like so to yeah. me really like <laughs> the, the side A yeah. is probably is probably my favorite, um, and then the first three songs are probably my favorite of side. 
A. But but that doesn't mean that I'm not really super stoked about all the rest. Yeah. To me, what, one of the best lines, though, is actually in um, the We Broke the News, where it's just like it doesn't have to be useful. It'll still get used. Yep. You don't have to be like useful. About, like, still going to yeah. get used. There's another great line in that one about um, if... Uh, People, people are basically confused because he's uh, he doesn't know who they're what they're who they're eating or what the, they're, they're tra- what uh, they're gonna do. Uh, no, he he who, does that thing where he reverses or uh, who they're going to blow. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the one thing I don't like about do you still, okay? So besides the electronic, like let's. I don't hear the electronic in it. I just out. hear like a like a no no no. Like I'm a, not I'm not talking about um. The, I'm talking about yeah, like, do you still I understand. Want to make out? Yeah. No, no, no. There is an electronic voice. Yeah, it's just like a little lift. It's like a little vocator. Uh, like I was thinking of it like just maybe one of those like uh, old timey mics and like somebody just run up on a lift. Well, yeah, yeah, right. but maybe yeah. Reese like, uh, was always all about the the, the like, like weird fuzz ba- box. Remember mm-hmm. when he, all of his early all oh, the early so rock from the crib singles, mm-hmm. and and I always. I, I yeah, would always joke with through an old time you might. Mathis Hunter was that I would we would always joke about how like Rock from the Crypt goes into the studio and they got their like little fuzz box like amp mm-hmm. with a microphone going through like a Fender Champ or yeah. whatever it is just like you know and that was like my favorite mm-hmm. era and when he, and I always say like oh Rock from the Crypt went downhill for me when they he kind of like ditched the like fuzz box. Vocals, yeah. got high five. where it's all where it, it sounds a little more pro or snake. right, right, right. But it, that was like almost to me when I heard that. That was like a little nod back, back to there. Like he's like, oh, he got his old fuzz box. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that called. enough to to know. But I, but the other thing I don't, which is it's still one of it's still probably my favorite song on the album. So this isn't saying much. It's like if if that's the worst, it's like your favorite song. You're saying this, but like I something about and I didn't know it until I was doing my research. That I didn't even like realize the line he was saying, but it's something like you know the line that's like my my dick smells like Cheetos. But my, my dick smells like my dick smells like Cheetos, but my bed smells like Glade. Yes, <laughs> like that line. After I read that, those were the words so he was dope. singing. I was like. <laughs> Modern adult, contemporary adult. It's a very different thing from yesterday. Very contemporary adult. Yes. <laughs> so those are my only two problems with my favorite. There's problems. a uh, <laughs> when I kicked him in the face is interesting. Um, it's sort of set up like he's saying, like he's being regretful. But I, I don't know if this is based on any true event. It seems like maybe there's something behind it. But um, some bar. He, he basically he says leading up to the line, he's like, I'd be lying if I said I didn't know what I was doing when I kicked him in the face. Mm. Oh. Gotcha. Know? Yeah. Kind gotcha. of tricky, tricky dick there. Yeah, he he really, you know, like so. I was talking about the um, I hate my neighbors in the yellow house. Mm-hmm. He really, he really like me. It's it's gray. It's gray though. Um, <clears throat> there really was a yellow house, and apparently they were like they were doing all kinds of illegal stuff, and eventually like SWAT teams came in, and like he said there was like a tank, but it wasn't like. Like, like it actually had wheels and it didn't have like one of those like like gun things on Turret. the top, but it had little <laughs> but little peepholes. He said there were helicopters and stuff, and they came oh, and wow. they like just like busted them. So it's like they were they weren't just like annoying neighbors. Yeah, like yeah. they were like so. It wasn't just, just the yard work at three a.m. Right. Next, uh, so when next level. saying yeah. right, it wasn't just the yard work. At yeah, 3 the crappy cars that moved in weeks. But it was um. But that when he's saying like this is autobiographical, he's like really saying that a lot of these songs are based on actual things. Mm-hmm. He might have just about embellished. Yeah, well, I think his entire uh, history is, is like that too. You know, yeah. like there's a the the first Night Marchers album is a, is a double, and it, it's a it's a masterpiece in my opinion. But um, it took me a while to get into. But uh, that one clearly is got some serious breakup vibes in it. You know, yeah. the whole thing. And uh, but maybe maybe it's just you know maybe it's a story. Maybe it's not uh, rooted in reality. But I suspect that there's a heavy root in, in reality there. But yeah. So what is every? Do you want to? No, I I just I, I want to kind of acknowledge this is kind of like the John Reese episode. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless somebody episode. starts picking up like a Drive Like Jehu album someday or or something else right. or a Rock dig, from dig the deeper, cut a notch. single. Yeah. yeah, but I think this is a good way to like showcase John Reese's you know his For output. Sure. And yeah. his significance, and his, and his significance, his importance, and, yeah, and just legacy, and just legacy, still going, like, still going, still doing and it. still, yeah, but but also legacy because it's like yeah. he's still going, still making stuff, but like there are some, there are a lot still of bands that, that 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 you know have were listening to the earlier stuff and that have actually like pushed them to like do what they're doing now. Yeah, so of it's um, 
it's to me it's awesome when you said that you were doing a you i know when you were first said that you were doing this you said it was a newer album mm -hmm. but listening to it it doesn't really have a time like it doesn't have like a i was kind of shocked to find out that it, it came out now because it just it seems so timeless yeah mm -hmm. it is very much so but uh, the other stuff is you know like if if rocket sounds kind of rockabilly or you know hillbilly it's you know that in the 90s being popular is yeah. pretty anomalous you know yeah like but you know with a jcm 800 and all that going on you know and it might also just be me i mean it might not well it definitely has that it, you know it's it very much presented that way you know like and not on the, the first record is uh obviously not formed uh that sort of image isn't formed yet but by circuit now is the second one i think and uh it's you know, they're definitely at that point all wearing the same outfits for their shows. Right. And, uh, they they and, got their their hair is done right. It, yeah, the the, the rhythms yeah. and the intervals between the notes are are, are yeah. symptomatic like that. But they're they're just you know, they're revved up. They're they're increased thrust as a rocket would have. Yep. Ooh. Yes. Tight thrust. Yeah. Thrust and trust. <laughs> Well, thank thanks for bringing this record My up. My pleasure. Yeah, and, definitely. And Glad to be on the show. Oh, thank you. Any any final words to to, to John Reese in San Diego? And, uh, uh, not really, man. Just just thanks, dude. Is this a sloth? Uh, I'll see Is this you later. A sloth arm? I think that the claws is, don't look that long. That's a John Reese arm because it's some kind of weird Picasso guitar because it's got some string on it. <laughs> string. So I, I think that's his uh his that's bear. It's art. a bear claw, I believe. It's a bear claw. Yeah, he was probably pretty fuzzy underneath. I don't know, though. He, you know, I haven't been there. I haven't smelled the Cheetos. You haven't smelled the Cheetos. But I would think that that's, that's a guitar. I don't know. If I get a, that's an arm playing guitar, if there's ever anything. Uh, that's what I see. Well, it's, it's nice. And I really do like that you picked this because I don't know that it's something I would have come across. I mean, if I ever did. You know, if I ever did pick up something or or go back, I, w I w it probably would be drive like Jehu, um, just because I've uh, like uh, so many people that I that I'm friends with and that I have similar tastes to me are really really into them. So it'd probably mm -hmm. be yeah. where I would go first. I don't know that I would make it. It's pretty all accessible the way to record. Going I think. All the... I think this is about as most accessible as. Swan yeah. John I do. I do have be. one one little but... interaction with him. Uh, I sent him a. Uh, uh, a CD of some stuff that uh, Lee Corum and I recorded as late oh, on Mains cool. before yeah. Dave was in the band. Yep. Before uh, Skin Job Dave. Uh, and the only response I got was from Swami. Nice. And it was uh, Dear Lay Down Duo, which I always thought was, was <laughs> cheeky, but obviously, like, he, you know, he got it, listened to it, acknowledged it. And that's the only response I got out of, like, you know, Touch and Go and Sub Pop and all these, you know. Yeah. Because that's, you know, you thought that was going to happen then. But, uh, that's all I got on that one. Which reminds me, I do want to say thank you, thank you to Dave and Lucy. Yes, thank David you. Lane and Lucy to Curtis. Use their beautiful Tiki Boys Ground Central. It's <laughs> a pre pretty incredible space. So it's many, beautiful. many thanks. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you very thank much. You. Yeah. Thanks and thank you, Chad, hey. for guest hosting. We'll and see you next you time. Rick, and see you next time. Big shout out to Tom. Tom. Bye, Tom. Bye.